Jumpy jump jump jump. Salem's birthday. Boy, I hope he likes his present. It took me a million hours to mold this old wand into a frame. <laughs> what you doing? <gasps> What's with the cat on the hot tin bed routine? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Jacket for dust? Ah. You little sneak. You're trying to find your birthday present. That's right, baby. It's my birthday, and I love it all. The party, the balloons, the cake, the fuss. And most of all, the presents. Because it's all about the presents. Speaking of which, what you got there? Is, uh, <laughs> is that for moi? Yes. Uh, no, I mean, maybe? Please give me a hint. No way. Please. Just a tiny little hinty-winty. Whoa! No! No! You'll just have to wait until tonight. That's the last straw, Ross. I'm leaving you. Getting ready for my birthday festivities, I see. <laughs> Here we go, like clockwork. Every year it's a countdown to the Salem birthday hour. All about Salem. Salem, Salem, Salem. 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 I resent that. Am I so wrong to expect those who care about me to also care about my birthday? We do. We will. Later. But right now, the Young and Relentless Marathon is on. 20 hours of non-stop heartbreak, amnesia, and mistaken identity. I see how I rate. Don't worry, we'll celebrate as soon as young Dr. Vanderscum makes chief of staff or little sissy is out of her coma, whichever comes first. Besides, we got you a really great present. Uh -huh. I just live for presents. Could my present be a pair of fuzzy dice? They go great with that fleet of Model Ts that my good pal Henry once gave me. Henry Ford, that is. Hey! Nice try, smart guy. A fleet of Model Ts? What do you think you're... What is the idea? Stop that! Salem, how could you do that? We will resume our regular programming when I get my question answered. I want to know just how fabulous my present is. Did you arrange to have a city named after me? Oh, that's right. I already have one. <gasps> no! I'll have you know that I've always gotten terrific birthday presents from my celebrity friends. And I'm talking about people like Amelia, Earhart that is, George Washington, and the famous pirate Jean Le Foot. Keep that in mind. And whatever my present is, just make sure you didn't get it from Cousin Ambrose. What's the matter? You didn't like your hand-knitted pink imitation Angora sweater? It was too small and it had a hood. Oh! <laughs> Don't you just love cheesy do-it-yourself gifts? Oh, good old Cousin Ambrose. It was a sweet <gasps> thought, though. No, I guess. A crummy picture frame? What was I thinking? Salem wants something bigger, better, more expensive. Well, there's nothing in the Nifty Gifties or the LL Bean there done that catalog. Anyway, I don't understand why you can't just give them the picture frame. You work so hard on it. But Salem is used to getting big cost a lot of money presents. People say they like simple little gifts, but they don't. Hey. All I'm getting him is some fresh catnip and a squeezy toy. Cranky old warlock, he'll love that. <laughs> uh, I mean it, Chloe. I have to get him something out there. Exotic. Like what? You're just a kid. You can't afford an extravagant gift. Besides, you know what they say. It's the thought that counts. Grown-ups just say that so they don't have to up our allowances. Hey, guys. Are we getting together later to work on our book reports? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Cool. See ya. What are we doing, Arzon? Time Machine by H.G. Wells. Time Machine, that's it! I got it! That's how I can give Salem the perfect killer gift. 
Wah! in here just a little, okay? Like, you're planning to find Salem's birthday present inside his kitty condo? Of course not. What we need from here is his address book. Then all we need is one teeny little thing from the attic. Huh? Come on, man. I gotta break even before the cat gets back. Excuse me? Do you guys know where Salem keeps his address book? <laughs> what are you doing in there anyway? Well... You know, when the cat's away. Okay, we've got the address book, which gives us the names of some of Salem's famous friends. Now all we need to do is find the right spell to get us where we need to go. Whose are these? Zelda's lost a little weight. We don't talk about it. Zelda's box of old spells has to be up here somewhere. Hmm, I've never seen this before. Well, I've never seen you before either. Oh, oh, watch it. <laughs> ah. Yes. Hey, Chloe, I think I found the time travel kit. Oh, my gosh, we found it. We found the spell to travel back in time. <laughs> Huh? We're gonna travel back in time? What's that got to do with getting Salem a really fabulous present? We're gonna travel back in time, and with this video camera, we're gonna get some of Salem's famous friends to wish him a happy birthday. It'll be an amazing, one-of-a-kind video birthday spectacular. Hmm, time travel, huh? Gee, I don't know. Sounds kind of, uh, dangerous. We are not liable in regards to lost luggage, library books, or limbs, yada, yada, yada. <gasps> or misplacement of travelers due to unexpected glitches in time. Yeah, you know, minor stuff like that. In addition, if the caster of the spell is to get home safely, she must have this compass in her possession at the time the spell expires. The length of the spell may vary. What do you say, Chloe? Will you come with me and help me? It's my chance to get Salem the biggest, bestest birthday present ever. I don't know. Come on, please. Think how disappointed he's going to be otherwise. It's this or a picture in a cheap recycled frame. Let's do it. Camera's rolling. Protection of Abeona, with this spell I cast, I ask you to take us to those of Salem's past. Hey, guys. Hilda and Zelda said you were up here. And then I should just... Ah! But wherever it is, we're here. The spell worked. <laughs> uh oh. Harvey? What? Sabrina? What happened? Why aren't we still in your attic? Um, well, you see, it's the funniest thing. Run! Run for your lives! <gasps> oh! Look, fellows, fresh prey. Ah! Wow! <laughs> Sabrina, what's happening? I don't know about you, but that picture frame is starting to look like a terrific present right now. Come on, Chloe, we've got to go for it. I've got to get Salem. Besides, look at the first name on the list. Amelia Earhart, the famous female pilot. You know who I am? Yeah. You're like the most famous woman who ever tried to fly around the world. Yeah, True. But the thing I'm probably most famous for by now is getting lost. So what are you kids doing here anyway? Actually, we're here to ask you a favor, and... <laughs> What kind of islanders are those anyway? Martha's Vineyard. There's never a moment's peace. What's the favor you need? I don't mean to be rude, but they're gaining on us. Make it snappy, okay? I need you to wish an old friend a happy birthday. It's... 
and celebration of a very near and dear old friend's birthday. Go ahead and send a big happy birthday wish to Salem! Salem? Is there a problem? I mean, wasn't Salem like a really good friend of yours? Salem is the reason I got lost and ended up stuck on this stupid island. He told me he had a map that would take me around the world and make me a star. <gasps> but it was a map to the star's homes. Salem, I never want to hear that name again. Really? So I'm guessing that means you're not going to want to send birthday greetings to old Salem? I said I never wanted to hear that. that dear friend of Salem's. Who's next? Somebody really special. There are two stars by his name in the address book. It's some guy named George. Huh? Warning, spell transporting time travelers now. Time what? <laughs> Salem, I hate Salem! <laughs> Hostile tennis playing islanders. Now I'm getting seasick. This is the worst dream I've ever had. George Washington? Wow. Salem is some every hitter. Good morning, Mr. President. What in the world? Who are you? We're here because we're making this really amazingly fabulous present for your old friend Salem. Salem? He's a friend of yours, right? I mean, you do remember him. <sighs> My dear, I think of him every time I chew, and every time I end up with a tongue full of splitters. Um, I thought I read somewhere that that thing about you having wooden teeth wasn't really true. Well, don't believe everything you read, young lady. Do you know why my teeth are wooden? I was out by my father's cherry tree. I was sharpening my axe. Salem was practicing the tango with untied shoelaces. He tripped, he slammed into me, my axe slammed into the tree, and it fell on me! <gasps> ah! Uh-oh. You distracted me with all that talk of Salem! Now we're under attack! The British are coming! Oh, please, let it be time to go! Come on, come on, do something! Oh, I think I'm gonna be sick. All right, all right, warning. Spell transporting time travelers now. I hate Salem! Where are we now? Great! The sky is three stars by his name. I'm guessing this must be the ship of one of Salem's best friends. The famous Paris, Jean Le Foot. This boat's not rocking. Cool! I hope this works. The spell could wear off any minute now. This could be my last chance to get Salem a really monster gift. Ahoy there, 
children. I have no idea who you are or why you're dressed in those ridiculous clothes, but welcome to my humble pirate ship. Jean Lafoot at your service. Frothing root beers all around for my new friends. They are obviously magicians of some sort. Excuse me, Mr. Pirate, sir. I... Huh? Whoa! Whoa, this dream is getting good. I really need to ask you for a favor. Yes, of course, anything. Whatever you do, don't mention... Whoa, pirates! Would you send a birthday greeting to your old pal, Salem? Salem... That's what I was gonna say not to mention. Salem? Why do I keep dreaming about Sabrina's cat? Salem? Because of Salem, my sword privileges were taken from me, and I am reduced to using this. I cannot go into the details. They are too sordid. But all oh, that humiliation! Forced to wear a long flamingo in place of a sword. And it's plastic, no less. Because of Salem, my sword was taken. In its place, I take this! You can't! I just did. <laughs> now we'll never get home, and it's all my fault. I just wanted to get Salem a killer present instead of the cheap lame thing I was gonna give him. A present? All this for a present? Silly girl, <laughs> don't you know that with presents, it's the thought <laughs> that counts. I said that. Who cares who said it? All I know is that I want my compass back. Well, I want my sword privileges back. Take these two to the brig. This one is coming with me. If you don't cooperate, I will feed your little playmates to the sharks! <laughs> Okay, I'm ready to wake up now. And when I do, I want to be in my own house, in my own bed, in my Captain Guano Jammies! If you ever want to see those jammies again, Harv, you better save Sabrina and get that compass back. How am I going to do that? Hmm. Ah. With a little help from our friends. Warning, five minutes and counting until the spell wears off. It's a race, and you're losing! But I told you, I can't get your sword privileges back. My magic doesn't work like that. What do you want from me? Got it! You want the compass? You have to duel for it! On guard! Salem! Good morning. 
We know! Uh, I'm awake, right? Uh, 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 right! But I was asleep, right? Right. Um, you checked out right after you got here. In fact, you still look a little groggy. What do you say I walk you home? <sighs> Guess it's time for Salem's celebration. Where is the little princess? I'm right here. Thank you for my present. I love it. I found where you hid it. In the trash. Pretty clever. Actually, I threw it out. I figured there was no way a dinky present that didn't cost a lot of money could ever compete with the amazing stuff you're used to getting. What are you talking about? Presents aren't about the money. This is the best gift anyone has ever given me. Tune in for next month's marathon when we find out what Biff chooses. Will it be that very special surgery he's been wanting? Or will it be a sham marriage to the cold but filthy rich Fifi? Next month! Wow. I've never had a framed photograph with me and someone else. What? Every photo I have is, of well, just me. How come? Because, darling, it's my world, and you people just live in it. Yeah, baby! Yeah! We'll test how long it takes Chester to ride the scooter around the cones and get to the cheese. Okay, Harvey, ready? And go! Well, that didn't go very well, did it? I don't understand it. Chester should be a genius by now. We've trained him for months, fed him a special <sighs> high IQ diet. And don't forget all those mouse therapy sessions. Well, we can still win. The science fair isn't until tomorrow. I don't know. The competition looks pretty stiff. Well, huh? well, well. If it isn't my favorite rat wranglers. Hi, Hi Jem. Jem. Oh, look at that. You taught a mouse to eat cheese. What a breakthrough. You know, Jem, we don't all have the money to hire a team of German scientists to do our project for us. Oh, them? They're just giving me a little hand. <laughs> Cloning my dog. Face it, Spellman. That reject rat doesn't stand a chance, and you know it. Harvey, it's not too late to come and join my exhibit. We can share first prize. Nah, I think I'll stick with Chester here. Thanks anyway. Winning isn't everything, Gem. How would you know, Spellman? You never win. Uh, students! Students! <laughs> May I have your attention for a moment? I've just received some exciting news. The judge for tomorrow's Greendale Science Fair will be none other than Professor Nate Houston! Professor Houston is the director of the Greendale Space Center. Greendale has a space center? He is also guest lecturer at the Greendale Public Library. Greendale has a library? Professor Houston is a very important man, so I urge all of you to do your best. Hmm. The only question is, where will I put the trophy when I win? She's right, you know. We don't stand a chance. Don't you worry. Chester will come through. I've got one last test I want to put him through. At home. <laughs> this should smarten him right up. It's a little mouse brain food I whipped up from some vitamins and rodent hormones. And now, the ultimate test. Ta-da! Wow! What exactly is it, Uncle Quigley? It's a pneumatically activated, balance-controlled maze for your mouse. I figured Chester here isn't hmm. dumb. He just needs a challenge. You put all that together for Chester? That is so cool. Thanks. Uh, Harvey, can you run up to the kitchen and get some cheese? Hey, sure thing. Well, now we know Harvey can do it. 
That leaves the mouse. Sabrina, I can't tell you how proud I am of you. You're embracing the world of science instead of relying on magic. Oh, that shows real maturity. Thanks, Uncle Quig. And thanks for building this nifty maze. <laughs> Are we having a warm moment here, or am I getting a hairball? <sighs> now let's see what little Chester can do. Look at him move. Go, Chester, go! All right! <laughs> Uncle Quigley, you're terrific. We got ourselves a winner. I'll be back in the morning and we'll head for the science fair. We're gonna show the world that a mouse can be just as smart as you and me. Ow! Oh, brother. Yeah. Does little Mousy Wousy like his foodie woody? I think I'm gonna pukey wooky. Oh, stop it, Salem. You're just jealous because Ooh. Chester is getting so much attention. Sabrina! Huh? It's time for bed. Okay, Aunt Zelda. Back in your cage, little fella. We're going upstairs. Don't sweat it. I'll watch him for you. You? I can't let you watch over a mouse. You're a cat. A cat? A cat? Excuse me, but I am most certainly not a cat. You are speaking, my young half-witch, to the proud product of 20 generations of skilled warlocks. A cat, indeed. <laughs> Rumph. I... I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... You should be. Ugh. Oh, all right. You can watch Chester. Just make sure he gets his sleep. <laughs> Tell me... Morning, Chester. Huh? <sighs> Morning, what? <clears throat> Oof, sorry. Salem, you ate Chester! Hey, what do you want from me? I'm a cat, remember? Oh, Salem, how could you? Chester was more than just a mouse. We bred him for grace and wit and intelligence. Well, if you'd bred him for speed, he'd still be here. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> Harvey's coming to pick us up any minute. Salem, you've got to take Chester's huh? place. Excuse me? Turn yourself into a mouse. <laughs> oh, yeah. That'll happen. Look, you got us into this mess. You've got to get us out. Just for the science fair, please? Get real. First, I was a warlock. Then I got turned into a cat. Now you want me to be a mouse? I'm just zipping down the food chain, aren't I? <laughs> well, forget it. Hmm. Ah. Yeah! Oh, no. Oh, no, you don't. Don't even think it. Huh? From cat to mouse, he'll make the switch. And none can heal him but a witch. <laughs> Fun. I suppose you think this settles the argument. Sorry, but it's your own fault. And you better cooperate at the science fair, or I'll leave you this way. Oh, yeah? I'm sure Quigley will have something to say about this. No one can hear you but me, Salem. That's part of the spell. <laughs> Good morning, Sabrina. All ready for the big event? Uh, yeah, Uncle Quigley. And how's our little exhibit? Hey there, Chester. You know, he looks a little chubbier than I remember. <laughs> hey! Morning, all! <gasps> what happened to you, Aunt Hilda? Oh, Zelda's making me clean out all my junk from the attic. Can you be a doll and give me a hand, Sabrina? Uh, okay. But just for a little bit. Harvey's picking me up for the science fair soon. <laughs> Boy, what a collection of junk. Watch your step, Sabrina. Try not to bump into any... Ow! <gasps> when you live 600 years, you tend to accumulate a few knickknacks. <laughs> What's this door for? Hmm. Oh, uh, I forget. I think it leads to some part of the netherworld. 
Better stay clear of it. I'm gonna get some of this stuff out of the way so we have room to maneuver. Hmm. Can't hurt just to take a peek. Mm. Whoa! for a door-to-door -door salesman. Hey, well, one of these doors has to lead back to the attic. Zip, zip, flu, curt, nip. <laughs> Obviously bluffing. Maybe this one. Ah! Well, it has to be one of these doors. Doesn't it? Nope, nope, not here. Not this one. No. Sabrina! I, I'm sorry, Harvey. I, I don't know where she went. If I wait any longer, we'll miss a science fair. Now, why don't you go ahead, and when Sabrina shows up, I'll tell her to meet you there. Sounds good. Hmm. Chester looks a little chubbier than I remember him. Hey! Ugh. No, are you? I really hate this place. Aunt Hilda, get me out of here! In this experiment, uh, I am able to generate electricity using just a potato and an accordion. Oh, and this wire running to that electric outlet. Oh. <laughs> oh. I see. And that makes you a nutball. And what is your experiment, young lady? Well, Dr. Houston, I have made a clone of my adorable dog, Ruby. Say hello, Ruby. <laughs> Mm, impressive, very impressive. And you did this cloning all by yourself? Yes, all by myself. <laughs> well, perhaps you can explain your methodology. <laughs> My what? How did you do it? Well, uh, I, uh, suck the dog in this thingamajig and, er, put some of this stuff in, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Yada, 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 thank you. <laughs> and what do we have here? Uh, me and, uh, Sabrina, she's my partner, um, who isn't here right now. We've been training Chester here for months. We've given him a special diet and, and lots of care to make him super intelligent. Watch, you'll see. <laughs> Go on, little guy. Go on. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it takes him a little while to get going. <laughs> like forever. What? That mouse is a big loser. <laughs> just like Sabrina. Loser? Oh, yeah? We'll just see who's the loser. <laughs> Where have you been? Never mind that. Where's Harvey and Sam? I mean, Chester. Well, he waited as long as he could. Sabrina, are you in any kind of trouble? Uh, no. Because if you are, you know I'm always here to help. Yeah, I know. Hey, is that a bald eagle in the backyard? What? Where? <gasps> ah. Beware. 
I don't have time for this. Sheesh, you try to make things colorful. Sabrina, where have you been? I'm sorry, I just got uh, stuck somewhere. Is it over? Yeah, and guess what? We won first place. We won? Really? That's great, Harvey. That's really... Uh, hey, where's the mouse? That's the best part. Dr. Houston was so impressed with Chester that he asked if he could bring him to the Space Center. He even gave me 10 bucks for him. Chester is going to become an Astro Mouse. What? Don't worry. Here's your five. They're sending Salem, uh, Chester into outer space? Uh, well, yeah, I, well, I thought you'd be happy. You know, it's a big honor. Is there a problem? I, er, yes. We, we bonded, Chester and me. His whiskers, that tiny nose. Gee, I'm sorry, Sabrina. Harvey, you've just got to help me get him back. Uh, sure, okay. But how? Thanks for driving us to the Space Center, Uncle Quigley. Well, Sabrina, your new interest in science is very encouraging. I can't tell you how proud I am that you won first place without resorting to magic. Yeah, uh, thanks. Ah, here we are. Yeah, all right, now, that's far enough. State your business. Yeah, we're here for the tour, officer. Hey, are you sending an astronaut into space today? Nah, not this trip. You know, between you and me, those guys are just so much window dressing anyway. Heck, my Aunt Lulu could do that job, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, officer, we're kind of in a hurry. Now, you want to go where the real action is, it's in security. That's my game, because I'm a guy that likes living on the edge. Uh, want a donut? Uh, suit yourself. Anyway, all they're sending up today is a bunch of lab animals. You know, a dog, a chimp, mouse. <laughs> huh? Hey, pal, you got any idea what they plan to do with us? <laughs> okay, thanks for the info. You seem like a bright fellow. You know what's going on? Sorry, I... I don't speak monkey. Excellent. Very good. Good, good. <laughs> You're in for quite an adventure, my little friends. It's not every animal that gets to go into outer space. Outer what? Hey, wait. No way. Help! I want out of here. To your right is the Space Preparation Research Facility, which includes the animal kennels. Breathe deeply, kids. You can almost smell the technology. Kids? Harvey, do you know where we're going? Me? I thought you knew. Hey! Stop right there, you two! Why, you? Don't make me drop my donut! Come back! Where are we? Don't ask me. Look for a light switch. I found it. Hey! Whoa, Harvey, what did you touch? Uh, I don't know. This must be some kind of anti-gravity chamber. Well, duh. Uh, hey, 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 it's kind of fun. Try it. Try to grab hold of something. <laughs> Ten four, Silver Eagle. I'm in pursuit of two unauthorized security breaches last seen. Hey, what fool left this thing on? <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey! All right, you alleged perpetrators, out of there! I think we lost him. And if you'll step this way, you'll see something truly fascinating. Someone's coming. Quick, in this closet. This is a centrifugal G-force simulator. Here, astronauts train for the crushing gravity of a space launch. Watch. Is it me, or is this closet moving? Too bad Sabrina isn't here to see this. She'd love it. Now, if you'll come with me, you'll get to see an actual space launch. <laughs> come on, we don't have much time. No, but he has to be somewhere. I mean, where could he be? This is just awful. I'm sorry. 
It's all my fault. Hey! Over here! <laughs> if only he could signal us somehow. Quigley! 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 Gow! Please, sir, don't taunt the animals. There's a chance they might not come back. And we want them to enjoy what little time they have left on Earth. T minus two minutes and ten seconds. The doomed, uh, groomed animals are being loaded into the capsule. Sabrina, look! Oh no, we've got to get him out of there. There's no time. T minus <gasps> two minutes on counting. T minus 80, 79, 78. Hold it, we have a code 15 on the tarmac. A code 15 is on the tarmac. Hold countdown. They're holding the countdown. What's a code 15? Who cares? This is our last chance. Wait here. But. <laughs> Yuck. I got two words for you, pal. Breath mints. Ungawa. Excellent. The code 15 is over. Prepare to resume countdown. T minus 60 seconds. 59 seconds. 58. Salem! Sabrina, get me out of here. Aha! Uh -huh. Gotcha! 30. <laughs> Sheesh! Wait till the last second, why don't you? T minus huh? 20. Yikes! 90. Hold on, Salem! Ah! Uh -huh. Huh? Er, hi, Uncle Piggly. Hmm, I'm waiting. Sure, but first you have to do something for me. What? Ah! We have a clean liftoff. All systems go. Repeat, all systems. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. I just didn't have the heart to tell you I had used magic. Oh, Sabrina, you can always count on me when you're in trouble, no matter what. That's what I'm here for. But what could you have done? You'd be surprised. What do you think held up the countdown? I don't know. Something called a Code 15? Which I believe stands for Man Walking Around Without His Pants. Uncle Quig, you didn't. I was never so embarrassed in all my life. <laughs> You're the best. What? And the next time I'm in trouble, I promise I will tell you about it. <sighs> hey, wait. How did you know the mouse was really Salem? I sent him a cheese gram. pay for Uncle Quigley's stupid doll. You're the one who broke it. But you're the one who summed up a whirlwind to do the dusting and didn't read the directions. For, for outdoor, outdoor use, use only. only. If you just occasionally get the facts before you leap into things... I would have no fun. Meanwhile, I need a job, or I'll be on half allowance until I'm 30. 
Ooh, they need crust scrapers down at the car wash. I was thinking more like cover model for romance novels. Ah, <sighs> gaze into the brilliant blue of my eyes, Fabio. Sure, right after I chuck a hairball into the brilliant pink of Zelda's house slipper. <gasps> Here we go. Beauty, poise, and talent show. First prize, $100? Sorry, kid, but you winning that show is a fantasy in search of an island. Get practical. Now you're the one jumping to conclusions. It's a show for cats. Oh, well, you mean I should enter? Now that's practical. I just knew you'd like the idea. Hey, with these rugged good looks and my warlock abilities, I'll make those Junior League cats look like something the dog dragged in. I hate this thing. I'm sorry. I didn't know all the cats had to be in cages. But wasn't it nice of that lady to loan us her birdcage? Peachy, it would have been even nicer if you'd checked out the rules before we got here. Here come the judges. Try to look dazzling. You try to look dazzling with your knee and your liver. <gasps> They're announcing the winner. The winner of the beauty competition is... Scheherazade! Huh? Owner, Harvey Kinkle. Harvey? Hey, Sabrina! Since when do you own a cat? Since Monday. Scheherazade just showed up on my doorstep. She had a collar with her name on it. She's incredible, Sabrina. You won't believe what she can do. Time for the poise contest. <laughs> All right, I admit she's not bad looking for a Persian. Luckily, this contest is also about poise. And poise is my middle name. My! What? The winner, Scheherazade! There's still the talent contest. Enough. Scheherazade will be available for more photos at our press conference. Congratulations on winning first prize, Harvey. Cheer up, Sabrina. Second place is winning, too. Except without the fame and glory and money. Show off. Ah! Hey! Hmm. If I didn't know you were just a cat, I'd... I'd... You'd what, Salem darling? <laughs> Come on, girl. Time for our press conference. See you later, Sabrina. Uh, uh... I... 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 Holy free... Holy... Salem, what's wrong? Scheherazade. She's not a cat. She's a witch. And what's more... I once almost married her. Really? Are you sure it's her? She looked human then, but I'd know her voice anywhere. It was over 400 years ago. A 
before the witch's council turned me into a cat. Last time I saw her, I'd promised to meet her at the Tower of London. We had tickets to that Anne Boleyn thing. She didn't know it, but I was planning to pop the question that night. You were? Oh, that is so sweet. So, what did she say? I have no idea. I stood her up. Salem, you didn't. I, I couldn't help it. I got scared. I panicked. I ran. And broke her heart. Look, I've been regretting it for four centuries. Scheherazade was the only woman I ever really le... Le... That, that thing when you like someone, but bigger. I think you mean love. Whatever. But see, I've always had this teeny tiny problem with commitment. The minute things get serious with a woman, my feet start heading for the Himalayas. You can't run forever, Salem. No, but 400 years is a good start. Look, maybe meeting her like this was fate. I mean, as long as you've both been turned into cats, you could pick up the romance where you left off. How about it? But what if she still hates me for standing her up? After 400 years? You know how women hold grudges. That's ridiculous. And I'll never forgive you for saying it. Now come on, you've got some serious making up to do. Jeherazad, I was a cad. Please forgive me. Jeherazad, I, I was a cad. Please forgive me. Shahrazad, I killed a clam. Please forgive me. You're not getting away from me this time, Katsanova. So you forgive me for standing me out 400 years ago? Believe me, darling, there's nothing to forgive. Turtles, I'm off to Tibet. Huh? But you're in love with Shahrazad. Tell my feet about it. They're running away and the rest of me is attached. Salem. I can't do it, Sabrina. I'm afraid to commit. Salem, I'm ashamed of you. Do you want to spend the rest of your life a slave to your fears? Sounds good to me. See ya. Then we have to get you over your fears. Look. The only way to overcome your fear of commitment is to work up to it gradually. Start with a small commitment, oh. something you never do anyway. Like, oh, never going to planet Pluto in winter. Yeah, I can do that. I will definitely never visit the planet Pluto in winter. But what if the sun goes nova in a billion years in winter, and the only safe place is the farthest planet from the sun, Pluto? <laughs> I can't do it. I need my options. Huh? Don't ask. Aunt Zelda, is there some spell for a person with a fear of commitment? Sure, you turn him into a cat. I mean, to make them love someone so much they want to spend the rest of their lives together? Sabrina, it's not smart to mess in other people's love lives. Even for a witch, love has to take its own course. In this case, love is taking its course straight to Tibet. I am not giving up that easily. Okay, Spooky Jar, I need a spell. <laughs> of love will haunt your sleep. But get the facts before you leave! <clears throat> In my day, witches listen to their jars. Hmm, suddenly, very sleepy. Honey, I'm home. Darling, I've cooked an extra special dinner. Mmm, 
mouse loaf. Song, children. We love Daddy, he's so great. He puts mouses on our plate. He is good looking, brave, and trim. We want to grow up just like him. Once more, children. We love Daddy, he's so great. He puts mouses on our plate. He's good looking, brave and trim. <laughs> Sabrina, you're right. It's time I took the plunge. I'm asking Scheherazade to marry me. Marry? Wow, that's way more commitment than I was expecting. Oh, I can't believe it. Our Salem is getting married. Who's the lucky feline? A witch he used to know. Her name is Scheherazade. Scheherazade? Not that man-eater. When she gets done with Salem, there'll be nothing left but his paw prints. You must be thinking of a different Scheherazade. Salem broke this one's heart 400 years ago when he stood her up at that Anne Boleyn thing. I remember that night. Scheherazade wasn't anywhere near London. Michelangelo was throwing a big party in Rome. Scheherazade was clinging to Mike like paint to a chapel ceiling. Maybe Salem thinks he stood her up, but she's really the one who dumped him. Of Course, that was before she got turned into a cat for stealing the husband of every witch on the council. I... I don't believe it. It can't be the same one, can it? Hmm, maybe I'd better do some investigating. Here's some fresh spring water, Scheherazade. From the Alps, of course. That's right, Hazel. I said married. Look, by the time Salem catches on, it will be too late. You know the rules. If I win the love of a warlock, the spell on me is broken. So, the second Salem says I do, I return to human form, and then it's goodbye, Salem. I'm off to Palm Beach. Oh, man. Hilda was right about Scheherazade. She only wants to marry Salem so she can be human again. Why didn't I check it out before I put that spell on him? It's official. This stinks. This is one small step for a cat, one giant leap for a confirmed bachelor. Huh? Come on, feet, move. You're never getting your cloud slippers at this rate. That's more like it. Salem, wait! You can't marry Scheherazade. I know all about that. You do? Sure. I do my research. Legally, cats cannot marry in this state. Which is why Scheherazade and I are getting hitched in the netherworld. That isn't what I mean. I mean that Scheherazade only wants to marry you to break that spell that turned her into a cat. She doesn't love you, Salem. It's all a big con job. I should have known. I should have known you'd test my commitment with a wacko story like that. That's really nice of you, Sabrina, but there's no need. I'm definitely going through with it. Sorry, no time for games. I'm meeting Scheherazade at the Beyond the Veil wedding chapel. Don't want to be late to my own. <laughs> Doors, I really hate this place. Salem! No entry? Key 
keep out? Faculty lounge? Occupado? Please use other door? Ugh! That's gotta be it. At least it didn't lead to the dock of a thousand boats. Where to, sister? Beyond the Vale Wedding Chapel, and hurry! You got it! Yes, indeed, you got it! Yeah! Huh. I told you not to interfere! Look before you leave. Excuse me, is this the swan boat, Biancas? You want the local! Thanks. Could you slow down? We're there! Yeah! You know, I lose more tips that way. Phew. There she is. <laughs> Jump, 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 jump. <gasps> and here comes Salem. I have to find some way to show Salem what kind of woman Shahrazad really is. Huh? Huh? Got it. We will see how she responds to the charms of Frenchy, the great French lover. If that louse really stands me up, he's going to have a space to rent between his shoulders. Oh, any cat who would do such a thing has the escargot for the brain. Hey, slow down, lover boy. More apologies if I give you offense. I said slow down. I didn't say stop. <laughs> I'll teach that guy to make Kitty whoopee with my girl. Not that he needs any lessons. Shahrazad won't put up with that creep for long. And so the witches council, they turn me into the cat for making the love when I should have been making the magic. How tragic. Yep, she'll deck him any hour now. How do I know you're really a warlock and not just some French alley cat? Could the alley cat do? This? Ooh! For me? If you say you will be my wife, it is yours. Say we. We, 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 all the way home, lover boy. All right, I've had enough. <gasps> Salem. Come on, Scheherazade. Sorry, Salem, but there's a better offer on the table. Not to mention the one on my paw. I thought we had something special. We did, darling. But a Frenchie is, as the Americans put it, da bomb. Face it, Tomcat, you are the loser. Oh, yeah? Well, this loser's about to kick your frog leg eating batty, pal. Wait for me inside, mon chéri, while I settle things with this Tomcat. Don't be long, lover boy. I've got some zings that need settling myself. <laughs> it's me, Salem. I, I'm sorry, but I had to show you what Scheherazade was really like. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and by the way, that was the worst French accent I've ever heard in my life. You knew? <laughs> hey, I pulled the same stunt to get out of marrying Marie Antoinette's cat. <sighs> so long, Scheherazade. Guess I'll have to find somebody else to sing the daddy song. The what song? Ah, it doesn't matter. Come on, I'll let you buy me a tuna sandwich. So you're not mad at me? No, but next time, remember... I know. Look before I leap. 
Uh, I was thinking, do a background check before you set somebody up, but here's is good tip. I just remembered. I'm still on half allowance until I pay for Uncle Quigley's doll. Though with Scheherazade out of the picture, the next cat show will be a snap. We'll go with the cowboy theme. I'll get you some chaps and a 10-gallon hat. I've got a better idea. This time, you be the cat. Hey, wait a minute. Now, I see you in a tutu and roller skates. Oh, and, and can you gargle the Star Spangled Banner? Freaks. Savage, we love you.